And here we have the Hyper AI box. So what do we see here? Hi, Nicholas. So um, I don't know if you've seen that, but um, last month we made an announcement that our uh, network appliance hardware, um, we, 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 we struck an agreement with Hyper Appliance and Hyper Cycle about making the Hyper AI box. Uh, so um, that was announced in December uh, in London, and this is the Hyper, Hyper AI box. I've got to explain a little bit about what Hyper Cycle and Hyper Appliance are. So uh, Hyper Cycle is creating a decentralized network for AI. Okay, so what does that mean? Um, if you look at AI, uh, it's already quite powerful, but when you look at general, general intelligence happening, what they call AGI, um, the idea is that with, 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 with hyper cycle is that one company should not be owning that general intelligence. And it should be for the people, by the people, for the people, okay? So HyperCycle created this kind of computing fabric for AI that allows you to have a fully decentralized system uh, for AI where different parts of AI algorithms are running on different nodes, so-called HyperCycle nodes. And some of those nodes are very large, which will be doing training of the neural nets and the neural algorithms. And some of those nodes are smaller, which might be just operating and just running a particular algorithm, right? So this is where uh, HyperCycle then, through CoreXL, invested into HyperAppliance. And HyperAppliance uh, and, and HyperCycle basically uh, have announced that they've given us a purchase order for 52,000 of these uh, AI, hyper AI boxes, right? So what this creates is a network that users will run of 52,000 nodes, and there'll be more, but this is the first order, which will basically create 52,000 nodes that can cooperatively run different parts and different types of AI algorithms, and basically to create some results. And with the, the way that the hypercycle algorithms work based on Toad IP, that means that you can easily uh, validate what each node has done and actually validate the work, right? And then people that are running these nodes would eventually get rewarded in some kind of blockchain-based tokens, right? For the work, the fact that they're running this node in their home, partic participating in the network, right? So um, above this whole organization, there's also like Singularity.net. If you, you can look up Singularity.net, it's kind of marketplace for AI. Uh, Dr. Ben Grutzel, who's also uh, been there in the forefront of AI and blockchain. And uh, of course, Dr. Tufi Saliba, who is the founder of Toad IP and also of uh, HyperCycle. And he's also the IEEE uh, person in charge of AI security. So uh, this is very important work. It's very exciting that there's a kind of grassroots effort for uh, creating this kind of decentralized AI platform. And in being a PhD in neural networks myself, I'm very excited about it. Uh, one thing I wonder, when I look around, and all these people have supercomputers in their pockets, but they're just using them for WhatsApp. They, 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 they're like, uh, 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 you know, like, it's such a wasted technology, uh, drones walking around and not using all this potential. Now, it sounds like you're trying to use the potential that everybody will have at home, and it, yeah. will, it will all work together, and this amazing performance of this rock chip CPU can be used. So you're absolutely explore. right. I mean, Human-to-human -human communication is, of course, you know, key to life, right? It's very important. So that's fine, but the chips inside our phones also have AI processors, also have GPUs, right? All are very important. So in fact, that's the kind of stuff that we are, that's the kind of technology and that the kind of uh, chips that we are using in, in these boxes to allow the hyper AI box to actually use that to a greater degree, yes, so it would use it more frequently than on the mobile phone, because on the mobile phone, those, some of those capabilities are not used all the time. Maybe in some heavy gaming, maybe 
if there's some facial recognition going on or some if, uh, if algorithms even, like that. If even, I'm not but even it's, sure. it's, as you said, the, the time that it's spent doing that kind of heavy processing on your mobile phone, the capability, certain capabilities exist, they're utilized very little, right? If they were utilized all the time, your battery would also drain so a, you, lot, a you, lot, so. You could think of using it more and more. It's kind of, it sounds like a little bit like SETI at home. Uh, yeah, similar to that. Where, similar where to that. people are signed up to use their hardware all the time yeah, the for key, some purpose. The key thing is, and you know, Dr. Tufi Saliba is the person to really explain this, but the key thing is that you know, there will be a fabric that can run this AI. And that's very important in a decentralized, you know, for the people, by the people. And that's the kind of mantra, at least the way I understand hypercycle, right? And, and uh, you know, we're, we're, we're really happy about our relationship with hyperplants and hypercycle and the fact that we're moving forward in creating these uh, network appliances for AI. It also validates our kind of idea of having this kind of network appliances with a customer, with a third party. You know, because we've been building the appliances a year before, maybe even started a year and a half before I met Tufi, and we literally shook hands and agreed the deal in three minutes. So, so that, that's kind of, because there was just a meeting of minds on that. I've been a, a, one of the biggest fans of the Rock Chip since uh, CES 2012, I think. I remember. It's been more than 12 years now. And Rockchip is an amazing uh, ARM company, and the, the, the latest chips have such great performance, and they, there's so much potential in that. When you show that all the ports can do 8K and all that stuff, and, uh, and they have all the NPU stuff in there, and there's so much potential to use this. You know, now the chips are of the speed that can compare to um, some of the other manufacturers. And you know, I've been watching Rockchip as long as you have, I remember the first chips. You know, it was very basic stuff at that time. But now, they're really catching up with a lot of other companies in terms of quality, in terms of video processing, uh, in terms of memory, in terms of speed. So, you know, these are eight core processors running over two, two, two gigahertz each core. You know, it's getting, it's getting competitive, right? That's already, that's already quite beefy. And they're uh, upstreaming. Uh, Rockchip is doing more and more work to upstream stuff to the open source community and helping all this get realized, right? It's, they're an interesting company and uh, you know, definitely worth, worth watching. You know, definitely worth watching. Yeah.